DLRs, what's going on? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking furnaces today. Hey, in the event that your furnace starts and then unfortunately stops and turns off at about 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, or maybe before 10 seconds, we're going to talk about a very specific part, the flame sensor. Let's take a look. DLRs inside the furnace room. Let's go to the opposite side. We have a Bryant furnace, as you can see here. And the Bryant is under the carrier brand or umbrella. And for safety purposes, on the right-hand side, yours may be on the left-hand side, we have turned the switch to the off position, and we've got this large cover or faceplate. We've got this very long threaded screw that goes all the way into this portion of the furnace. We are going to unscrew this counterclockwise, and we are going to carefully shift it back and pull it up and set this aside in a safe location. It's a little top-heavy, so position it in a way where it's not going to fall and damage itself. With the cover removed and set aside, we now have much better access to all the internal working and moving parts of our furnace. Here's our pressure switch. We've got our inducer motor and fan. The larger fan is inside the furnace. We've got our gas valve. Here's the toggle switch in the on position. Coming down below, here's the burner chamber. And right there is our flame sensor. That is what we are going to be talking about in this video. On the opposite side, we have our igniter in there that ignites the burners. So what I'll do is get some more light in here, position the camera in a way where we can show you that part. At this point, I've got the camera positioned in a way. Again, as I film this video, I'm going to do my best to zoom in and give you a good view of the part itself. And we will start with the electrical wiring. This portion right here is a plastic guard that protects the wiring that feeds over this portion of the furnace. And at the end of it right there, you can see the orange electrical connection feeding into the electrical lead of the flame sensor itself. And taking a closer look, you see a white base that is porcelain. And if you look closely, you can see that the flame sensor is secured to an aluminum mount by a small quarter inch screw. And before moving on, let's talk about the basic 101 purpose of the flame sensor. And as we talk about this, we will learn more about how it is designed and positioned inside that portion of the furnace. So again, a basic 101 definition of the flame sensor is while the furnace is up and running and the burners have been ignited and the flames are in full force feeding straight forward through their respective circular cutout holes, as you see there, here is one right there and to the right, is the other one and you can see another circular hole right there the entire time the furnace is up and running that flame sensor is using the electrical tip probe to send micro amperage readings to the motherboard or control board and that flame sensor is looking for a very specific reading or temperature or flame temperature output as the furnace runs and heats your home and let me scroll in because i want to show you a better view of that electrical tip or probe there we go i zoomed it way in sorry if it's a little bit blurry i may zoom it out just slightly Again, I want to focus on the electrical probe or tip way down there. And that is extremely important, again, while the furnace is up and running. That electrical probe is going to be basically dead center inside the flame the entire time it's up and running. And really, the two common causes of how this part becomes faulty is number one, it's several years old and it's never been cleaned. And I'm going to bring the screwdriver in here. I want you to take a look at this portion right there. And directly below that, you can see a little bit of corrosion on the probe itself. And the more corroded that tip is or probe is, the more likely the flame sensor itself is going to begin picking up faulty amperage readings and send that info to the control panel or board and tell it to shut the system down. And again, that could happen within 10 seconds. And the second common cause is the entire flame sensor itself is unfortunately faulty and will need to be replaced. And that could be as simple as the porcelain base of the flame sensor is cracked or the electrical connection point is cracked or faulty as well. So again, those are the two common causes. Now there is a third possible cause. However, it's not as likely and common as the other two. Again, number one is a dirty and needing to be cleaned electrical probe. Number two would be the flame sensor itself is completely faulty and needs to be replaced. However, that unlikely and uncommon third option or cause could be the flame sensor probe here is broken at this angle portion here and the electrical probe is not even inside the flame. And in that case, DIYers, the flame sensor is not picking up the required amperage reading that it's designed to do. Because again, your probe is broken and not even inside the flame. And I'm going to show you that here shortly. I'll turn the furnace on and you will see as the furnace is up and running, again, that flame sensor is inside the flame the entire time. 
Or believe it or not, it could be as simple as this mount is damaged and has altered the position of the flame sensor. In other words, your flame sensor is still good, your electrical probe is all still intact and there, but this mount here is either bent or the screw is not secured in a way that secures your flame sensor in position how it's supposed to be. So again, when your furnace turns on, take a look at that flame sensor probe. Once the igniter heats up to a point where it ignites all of your burners, that is when you will see whether or not that probe is inside the flame. And if it is, and your system is shutting down, turn everything off, remove this part, clean it, reinstall it, and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, turn everything back off, remove that part, and replace it with a brand new one. And with that said, down below in the comment section as well as the description section are video links on how to do both of those tasks. So again, I'm going to scroll out, I'm going to turn the furnace on, and I'm going to show you this flame sensor in action. I've got the camera set back and what I'm going to do next is go to the right side of the furnace and turn on that main electrical switch that I showed you in the beginning of the video. And once I turn that switch on, you will hear the furnace turn on. And what we are waiting for now is the inducer motor to turn on and that is just slightly above the camera angle. I'll show you that here shortly. As well as the electrical probe right in there. You will see that begin to heat up and glow. And once it starts heating up, it will then get to a point where it ignites all six of the burners in this furnace. And at that point, I'll give you a close-up view of the flame sensor itself inside the flames. And while we wait, the electrical wiring that feeds power to our igniter, and you can see the base of it, is right here. And real quick, coming up top, again, we are patiently waiting for our inducer fan and motor to turn on. And this portion right there will spin very fast. So keep your hands clear of that. As you can see, there it starts spinning. From here, the igniter is going to begin heating up. You will again see that little igniter probe begin to glow. And there it is, as you can see. Again, we are waiting for it to reach a certain temperature and ignite all six burners. And there it is. And as that system burns, you will then see the igniter itself begin to get cooler and no longer glow. And that is exactly how it is designed and is going to work. At this point, DIYers, I don't recommend doing this at home. However, for this video, I am going to show you a close-up view, again, of the flame sensor itself inside the furnace while it's running. And again, I'm going to come inside here. As you can see right there, check that out. The sensor probe itself is inside the flame. You can see the flame going over the top and underneath. And again, that is extremely important. That electrical probe must at all times be the dead center of that flame. Again, so you can properly send the micro and root readings to the onboard computer to make sure everything is up and running as designed. And you can see it turning colors for a bit. Again, that's normal because again, it's inside that really hot heat. carefully reinstall the cover plate actually what I'll do is wait for the furnace to stop and turn off and then I will re-secure the cover panel DLR is back to the Crescent workstation and in previous videos I've mentioned it before and I'm going to mention it again my wife is awesome she has given me the green light to bring the jet ski inside for the winter to do some DIY repairs check that out this is my mom and dad's jet ski and to the workbench itself a lot going on, always, really. And it's snowing outside. Well, it did this morning. And we've got videos on building your own skateboard, whether it's just for fun or for your business. We've got our channel logo on there, DIY Raptor. Lots going on, DIYers. Again, we hope this helps. 
do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely ring your youtube bell that would be very helpful to us we would really appreciate it thanks again for watching this is our crypto token toolbox ticker symbol diy check out toolboxtoken.com we've been having a lot of fun with that that's awesome thanks again for watching